Someone's cursing, my lord. Late night lunch. Someone's puffling, my lord. Late night lunch. Someone's growing, my lord. Late night lunch. Oh lord, late night lunch. This is a post-Watershed production. Good evening, dear listeners, and welcome to Late Night Large, a show that wines and dines and takes you home, but knows your boundaries. My name is Aaron Bliss, and next to me sits the man who wines, finishes your meal, and knows no boundaries, Mike Large. (laughs) Alright, guys. Hey, good to broadcast another show. Um, This week's theme is going to be Corporate Icons, in the form of characters used to represent companies and promote their products generally. Um, we've tried to compile a pretty comprehensive list of the ones we can remember from the past couple of decades or so. I think we've done quite well. I think we have. Uh, we're going to start with, a, well, an obvious place. Mike, what would you say is your favourite corporate icon that you can think of? Uh, my favourite corporate icon, Mayor McCheese. You might not remember him. Uh, he, well, or know him. He was in uh, adverts with, uh, obviously, Sir Ronald McDonald. And, uh, yeah, he was part of his motley crew, so to speak. And, uh, yeah, I aspire to be a cheeseburger, so uh, (laughs) that's my man. Uh, Aaron? Brilliant. Do you know what? I mean, I I really struggled. I really struggled to pick a favourite because uh, I think things like Toilet Duck and Mr Soft... (laughs) <laughs> as well as the Pillsbury Doughboy, his cousin, oh, yeah. run, run very close. But <clears throat> my favourite is always going to be the Hamburglar <laughs> from the uh, clearly the same corporation, the same fast food restaurant chain, which we dare not speak the name of. But um, they, those were great. We <laughs> good work, Mike. You're breaking things. Um, we'll. Uh, I'm sure we'll come back to the uh, the power of the uh, the old McDonald's animated advert series. With all those wonderful characters. What about your least favourite? I ah, know who mine that's, is. That's that's a good one. The most, I mean, what how would we define that? I guess the the one that irritated us most down the years that that instantly turned us off. That bloody go compare guy. He's yeah. annoying. I'm going to stand out for the crowd and say I'm a big fan of the go compare tenor. You would do. Although I've got to admit the adverts have gone downhill. I mean, in the Stone Ages. They've just invented the wheel and then they invent car insurance yeah, at the same time. But in in defence of that advert, that bird who's driving that car, she is tasty. So I'm going to stand up for that. that. I like that advert for that reason. But uh, I, I don't know. It just annoys me a bit. Yeah, I think it might have it might have lost its uh, luster somewhat. I'm going to throw this right in there. The one that irritated me the most is quite obvious actually. It was the moment when Frosties really lost it. It was when Tony Tiger, who had been nothing but a a mainstay for them, a, a diligent and uh, shining star, top boy of uh, yeah cereal promotion, and they decided to uh, well, they brought out a series of adverts that I think he was in the background, but it was the uh, what was it, the fourteen-year-old kid singing the primary school song about how Frosty's tasted great oh <laughs> god there were even Facebook pages <laughs> Facebook pages dedicated to uh, plotting his demise I believe is how unpopular he was there were even rumours that he uh, received enough death threats to uh, flee the country what? So, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if that's true I think that's fabricated Aaron isn't it yes see <laughs> the the only proper way to deal with uh, an awful advert like that is clearly not to to boycott Frosties, although that is clearly easier said than done. No, you can't boycott Frosties. No one boycott Frosties. They're good. Mm, okay. Well, yeah. So I, I think the uh, the Frosties kid has to be number one on my list. Speaking of kids, Milky Bar kid. 
Strong what, and tough. What a lad. Only the best is good enough for him. <laughs> He's changed He's, a, a bit over the years, hasn't he? Um, well, have you seen him now? <laughs> the original one. <laughs> I watched a programme with him on. A, honestly, yeah. Well, a, I take it he has grown up. He didn't stay Yeah, he's, he's, o- he's a middle-aged man now. Has he lost all his hair? Yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah, you ought to see him now. Uh, Google it, people. Google it, it's funny. He clearly didn't keep up with his milky bars, to be fair. Definitely not. I think... To be honest, though, going back to uh, Frosties, cereals are definitely a, a massive area for these characters. I mean, you've obviously got Snap, Crackle and Pop. I used to remember the... Uh, do you remember the Shreddies Hunger Strikes monster? Do you remember that? Yes. Yeah, yes, when, when, when he used to leap out from nowhere and drum on people's stomachs with a pair of spoons. Yeah. What an uh, ass. It... <laughs> I did. I did enjoy those, and not not forgetting Coco Monkey, obviously, who always had to save his Coco Pops from the evil. Uh, what was that crocodile? And, uh, uh, oh yeah, and his uh, his killer ape. What was his name? Crew. Do you remember his name? Probably Croc or something. Equally uh, equally simple. Inventive, isn't it? Yeah, um, and uh, a shout out as well to the uh, ricicle astronaut. He was pretty cool. Bit of a lad. Okay, uh, we're going to uh, we're going to expand on our our um, discussion particularly of the McDonald land characters now because uh, I remember being a, a young boy and obviously the uh, the happy meal was the the meal you most wanted to to get stuck into mainly because of the fantastic free toys you got with it I mean I'm old enough to remember when uh, the McDonald land characters uh, were part of uh, the giveaway and they used to come in these little uh, wind up cars um, I don't know if you remember that that huge bird character that used to be uh, in McDonald Land. Apparently, that was Early Bird, representing the breakfast menu. And obviously, as we've already mentioned, Mayor McCheese, um, top boy he is, tell you, the Hamburglar, Ronald himself. So uh, I absolutely love those toys, and I can't really believe that there was a decline in their popularity. To be honest, they were the best thing about McDonald's. I wouldn't say they were the best, but they're up there. Anyway. Uh, food <laughs> the greasy, I had a feeling food. that was coming in case anyone thinks that calorific we, we are actually fetishising McDonald's which is not true at all we're now going to balance the equation with another fantastic magnificent corporate icon Mr Colonel Sanders what a man he does some good chicken that right and he's oh. a very natalie dressed southern gent yeah what, how would you compare the, the two icons Ronald versus Colonel. <laughs> well, when you say Ronald versus Colonel, I mean, there is only one way to compare them, and that's who would win in a fight. <laughs> Go who, on. Who would, I mean, Ronald McDonald uh, or, or Colonel Sanders. I mean, uh, you've got to, you've got to put your money on the Colonel, really. I mean, um, how so? He's a Colonel, military <laughs> background. Uh, okay, that that would be interesting to check out. Um, I, I, I might have to Wikipedia that in the uh, d- in the break. Yeah, <laughs> no, I, d- I, re- I don't know actually. Yeah, well, but Ronald he's McDonald- he's got to be in his 60s, surely at least. Yeah, all right, okay. well, well, how old's Ronald McDonald then? Ronald McDonald is ageless. Some say he's undead. Undead, I think that's yeah, a good way <laughs> to describe him. Yeah, but he doesn't look like he'd be much use in a fight, really, does he? Well, oh, I don't know. <laughs> You, I don't know. You, always, you always look to me like you might be a threat to your children. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's got to be rules against saying things like that. You're going to get in trouble for that. Um, Apologies. <laughs> no, don't apologise to them. Apologise to McDonald's <laughs> Corporation, mate. That's who you need to apologise to. And we'd just like to uh, clarify that uh, <laughs> the, uh, the views and um, opinions stated hereof uh, are not the views and opinions of uh, Daily Town Now or any of his subsidiaries. <laughs> or even me. It's just, that's, just, <laughs> that's, that's bad even for me. I, I disagree with that. Anyway, let's get back to the subject yeah. of Colonel Sanders duking it out with Ronald McDonald. Well, who, would, who do you think would win in a fight? Actually, I'd, I'd, probably, I'd probably agree. Unless Ronald had any kung fu moves, I can see the Colonel breaking out his cane yeah. I reckon he's pretty handy with a cane, Mister like Mister Miyagi style. Yeah, he would be, wouldn't he? I, I definitely. So I'm I'm betting on the Colonel there. So yeah, KFC wins again. Well, uh, are we going to include the Burger King at all in this? The, the King, the King, the, the the King of Burgers, apparently. Um, well, is he going to okay. get involved? Is he going to get some action? Well, he get involved, can't he? Uh, hmm. 
See, he's, Again, the, hi- he's the highest ranked out of all of them. <laughs> I mean, King beats Colonel, surely. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, who do you, who do you think would win, the Colonel or the King? Between the Colonel and the King. Yeah. Fight to be f- to, to the be death. F- to be fair, surely the the King would just order his minions to no, tear, tear the Colonel have... apart. It's one on one. It's one on one. Otherwise, does... otherwise, Ronald McDonald would get the hamburger involved, wouldn't he? So, <laughs> but I know we've had our differences, right? We no, we, we haven't always seen eye to eye, but give me a hand. What, what about, it's one on one. What about Officer Big Mac? <laughs> Off, <laughs> Officer Big Mac. See, he, he, he can't have. Surely them. he'd surely he'd step in and no, uh, they stop, ha- stop the whole show. No, they can have their own fight. It's one on one. Come on. No, um, one on one. The king or the what, colonel? Come on, who's going to win? Colonel. Well, you know, looking at the king, he clearly has. A significant age advantage. I'd say he's a good twenty-five years younger than the Colonel. That and the fact that he also take him looks, in the heyday. He, lo- he looks in, in the heyday. Yeah, is in is in. Imagine them at the same age and then fight. Right. So I'm imagining the Colonel. It's fairer. I'm right. I'm imagining the Colonel in Kentucky as a a poor thirty-something uh, grifter no. who's who's a uh, just who's just had a brainwave for. Um, a secret sauce for uh, blending into chicken, eleven secret herbs and spices. Is that uh, what it came about? I, I think so. <laughs> but he uh, he clearly you know he doesn't have the capital to get it off the ground, and then all you of a sudden have capital to win in a fight. But what about you, the, you're going uh, off royals here? Because because the the Burger King clearly didn't ascend to his royal rank that early either. So he was probably a grifter too. He's probably just yeah, you're right. He probably went from grifter to king. That's how <laughs> it works, isn't it? He's probably just hustling people on the side of the road, pick <laughs> picking the food out of the rubbish. What and, and bought the crown? <laughs> <laughs> hey, he got the crown for his burgers. He, he earned the crown that he ascended to the royal rank. Grifter surely. to top burger maker, and then they gave him they made him king. So you know, you you <laughs> please my belly the most. You're now king of this fine land. I think that's definitely how it worked. Disagree. So, in conclusion, Colonel Sanders would definitely kick Ronald's ass, but we're really not sure how it would end between the king and the colonel. I think he take. I think he take the king, one on one in a fight. I mean, what's the king's got a crown? I yeah. say he ain't got. He ain't, he ain't got nothing. He ain't got nothing on the colonel, has he? Let's be honest. <clears throat> so basically, all you'd find were two corpses with KFC buckets over their heads. Absolutely. Now, there's something while we're on this this topic that that's been bugging me. What happened to the original Mr. Muscle? That <laughs> that has annoyed me. I genuinely, what what's gone on? If if you know, well, unless of course Aaron can tell me. But it, go, listeners, talk to us. If you know what happened to him, I mean, I heard rumours that maybe he died. I hope not, because he's a bit of a legend. But why have they replaced him with an actual muscular bloke? It's not as funny. It's not as good. And if anyone from Mr. Muscle is listening, uh, as they should be, sort it out. Get him back. Aaron, do you know what actually happened to him? Do you know why? Well, first of all, I know that Mr. Muscle was a great inspiration example to you when you were a kid, so <laughs> I feel your pain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was the dweeb. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> well... Legend has it that the original Mr. Muscle uh, basically died from constantly inhaling his own fumes while cleaning his oven. But um, <laughs> I think uh, I think what happened was, um, you know, if I'm being brutally cynical, I think possibly the uh, advertising executives thought, you know what, I think I think people don't take this guy seriously. I mean, he's got no muscle. He's uh, He's too ironic. Uh, people don't get irony these days. We need a real Mr. Muscle. We need a muscular superhero. With bad dubbing, don't buy it. I'm not having it. I no no irony still has its place in the advertisements of today. I no, well I that's crap. I I disagree with the. Can I just say though that the first wave of adverts with the new Mr. Muscle, you know, with the really bad dubbing, yeah, and the foreign actresses, yeah, they were uh, they were quite sexual for British TV. The older, <coughs> the young housewives leaning over the counter, this scrubbing back and forth. Yeah, yeah, that pleased me. But what didn't please me was the new Mister Muscle. All right, he's he's bought. What's good about him? What's special? Nothing. The old Mister Muscle. Now he was a lad. Yeah, because I, uh, I mean, it's stretching 
stretching the envelope a little bit to suggest that a dirty oven is the equivalent of a villain that a superhero needs to bring down. It's not exactly a crime syndicate, is it? No, not... Well... Because it's taken... Because the old the point of the old Mr. Muscle, surely, was it was very down-to-earth. It was all about reality. The guy, he wasn't muscular at all. He was as weedy as they came. All he wanted to do was clean his oven properly. And he just didn't have what it took. But then Mr. Muscle, the product, came along, and he felt like, you know, he felt like an Adonis. Yeah, in my eyes, he, he was an Adonis. He No, he, he was... Uh... He was good. Let's bring him back. While we're on the subject of uh, cleaning subjects, though, cleaning subjects, <laughs> or cleaning or even cleaning products, Mr. Sheen. Ah, oh, shines up teens things clean. Yeah, what a lad. I mean, uh, one mean, of my favourites. I think I've got to say, I love Mr. Sheen. He's up there. He's up there. He he, he looked the part, didn't he? Him and his magnificent moustache and his yeah. big old style well, headwear you, as he flew mustache. that little plane. That was the best thing. Was the fact that he was a pilot. Yeah, I mean, how how much of it? How that's an absolute genius on the part of the advertising executive to make him a pilot, because not only have they got uh, an intriguing little character, but they've also given him a vocation. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they're giving him a job. Yeah, He's a pilot. Exactly, because you know, Mister Mister Sheen, right? Just spraying a can of furniture polish. That that's pretty lame, to be fair. That's not going to go very far, is it? Miss the Sheen flying a plane that spews furniture polish out the back as though he's skywriting, that is good. Genius, that is. Genius. I think, also, you mentioned, I think you mentioned earlier, Toilet Duck. Oh, you mentioned yes. Toilet Duck? Yeah. I did mention Toilet Duck. Toilet Duck. Now, that's, he's cool as well, with his little quacks. I'll tell you what, it's a good way to get the party started. <laughs> yeah, it, uh, <laughs> if you say so. Toilet Duck it, it is pretty brilliant. Um... I mean, obviously the other genius thing about Toilet Duck was the fact that they shaped the bottle to look like a duck. Genius, isn't it? I mean... I'd, how sure, they thought of that? Surely, exactly. I mean, <laughs> what they should have done, really, is uh, make the Mr. Sheen furniture polish the same shape as uh, an aeroplane. That would have been the uh, logical thing to do, really. They really Cause should Because then you would have got kids to uh, polish the furniture. They've missed the trick. They'd, I know, they... Yeah. Flying it all over the living room. Although there are th- things that you... Uh, I've seen them. They're li- little pads, and and you put them on your kids' feet. <laughs> and w- honestly, now look, if you've got wooden flooring or something, <laughs> and, and they are they're like little dusters, and you put them on oh, them, right. and their hands and their feet, and they crawl around doing their thing. That's right. And they're inadvertently polishing the floor. That is absolute genius. Buy some. I don't know if any of you watch uh, An Idiot Abroad, but <laughs> cut quality. Carl Pilkington. He he found he found some of them in somewhere. I can't remember where he was now. That's not the point. The point is he found them and he brought them to my attention, and I'm glad he did. When I have children, I will exploit them um, in the way that I will be buying them, sticking them on their little hands and feet, and making them making them polish things. I uh, I have to also vouch for that. I definitely think you will exploit your children. Yes. San Etienne now. <laughs> See you in a minute. The following section has been removed due to copyright infringement. Sorry about that. Fight the power. Right then, uh, yeah, welcome back. Whilst we're on the subject of children, just before that track there, which, by the way, I, w- I won't be exploiting mine. Thank you very much, <laughs> Aaron, you, you, so. you, you sick man. Mentioned the, the Milky Bar Kid before. If you haven't Googled him yet, why not? It brings, brings up a, a topic... Children in advertising. Is it ethical? I mean, you see them programmes, don't you, about the pushy parents and things. Okay, it's not always pushing them into advertising. Normally it's pushing them into beauty pageants and doing horrible things to them and, you know. But, uh, I mean, what do you guys think? Let us know. Facebook page, Late Night Large. Have a little look. Search us. Like the group. Leave comments. Communicate with us. Song requests. Who knows? Okay. What's worse can happen? Can you think of any other characters other than the Milky Bar Kid that were specifically children? Uh, I've been racking my brains. I can't really... Um, I mean, I don't know if the Fry Kids really uh, count, again, from McDonaldland, but... 
Um, mm. No. I mean, a lot of adverts have children in them. Oh, of course, yeah. Uh, most. But I, know, I can't think of any that were that were specifically... Do you know, it's funny you should say that, because uh, if we look at characters like uh, the Pillsbury Doughboy, obviously, and uh, Little Chef, they're not children, but I always kind of consider them eunuchs. <laughs> I, can, I can see why. Yeah, exactly. They they are they are completely asexual. I guess the bicycle astronaut was a kid. The the little cherub thing, fairy fairy ah, liquid. Yes, the fairy cherub. That's a, that's little, a good point. That's, that's a that counts. Although again, that is that's bizarrely that's that's quite creepily asexual. Again, again, it looks a little bit like a eunuch. Yeah. Yeah, okay, again, I see, I see what you mean. Well, a lot of advertising is aimed at children, so it makes sense to use them. But there aren't really any, I don't know, perhaps we're missing something. Mm. I mean, if you, another interesting point as well is if you look at the, all these corporate characters and icons, what what's the kind of connection in, in who they are? They're generally either quite wacky, well, you'd say men, quite quite generally wacky men, or children, or really attractive women. Uh, uh, sorry, you've lost me there. <laughs> really attractive women. Anyway, we'll just we'll just ignore that point, which can't be backed up with any evidence. It can. But, um, which really attractive female icon? Sun maid. <laughs> oh, From raisins. Yeah, not not forgetting uh, Aunt Bessie, Aunt Be- Be- <laughs> Betty Crocker. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they are. Yeah, yeah, okay, right. Maybe you're a bit of a horn dog. Maybe you're um, right. No, I was going to say, yeah, anthropo- anthropomorphic animals. It's easy for you to say. Yeah. <laughs> uh, eunuchs. Or, <laughs> <laughs> or monsters. Friendly monsters. or Monster uh, Munch monsters. The Monster Munch monsters. Oh, and let's not forget the honey monster. Oh, the honey monster. But, yeah. they're, but they're all a little too friendly. Is, I mean, are there no aggressive monsters? Are there no monsters with uh, emotional issues? Or No, that's not what... I don't think that's the idea, is it? <laughs> really? I, that's not going to sell. <laughs> no? Uh, what? Uh, it it no. might not sell, but maybe it would deal with a few issues that children of today might have. Maybe. Speaking of having issues and being aggressive and generally uh, pissed off with the world... What about the icon for Microsoft Office, the Office, generally Word, but uh, the the Office paperclip? Oh, well, yeah. what, what's your opinion on that particular corporate icon? I used to, I used to, I don't know. I like him. You can make make him do things, can't you nowadays? Make it, yeah. Have you not done it? That animate thing. Well, you make well, it, what can you make? Yeah, you, know, you right click on him and go to animate, and he does stuff. Can you make? And you can be- you can have different things now. You can have like a a professor and a, and a cat. In all sorts, you can change him. Little can, icons. Can you make him like pick locks or? Yeah, yeah, all sorts. They do Blow all sorts. Blow himself up. Yeah, they do all sorts. <laughs> Honestly, really? things like that. That's what they do. You can change the character now. You can change it from a paperclip. You can have it to on you know, these old modern day computers and whatnot. You can you can do that. <laughs> modern day computers. <laughs> We're not yeah. living in the Stone Age anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Obviously, because I'm ancient. Um, <laughs> definitely not. Yeah, um, they're, they're quite cool. I like the. I used to spend hours at, at school. Just you know, giving it right click and then animate, oh, and just watching them animate <laughs> and going through. All the, that's what I did at school. That, watching that them go lo- through their. That sounds a lot like a a, pro, a really, really, really awful program we used to have at school. I think it was called uh, was it Pob, the the character Pob or something. You would you would type in. Uh, it was a bit like Hangman. You had blank letters and you, you'd type in a word, and uh, if it recognised the word, Pob would then fulfil the action. For instance, pop. And it would like blow up and then explode, or jump. Just very simple actions. And bear in mind, this was very, very early kind of computer game systems. Don't think I remember it. No, it was pretty bad. But um, another interesting point as well is when uh, advertising executives excel themselves in uh, resurrecting an old brand. For instance, the PG Tips Monkey used to be the ITV Digital Monkey. So what actually happened was ITV Digital obviously went down the toilet and uh, took with it almost a lot of football league clubs. So there was a lot of animosity towards them and obviously their icon was that, you know, furry, you know, glove puppet monkey thing and clearly they probably had millions of them unsold lying in the warehouse thinking, what the hell are we going to do? Rebrand it as the PG Tips monkey 
because obviously PG tips were lacking an icon since it was told that they couldn't use chimpanzees anymore because it was cruel. They've, they've got an icon. What's that? <laughs> oh god. <laughs> they've got an icon. Go on. What's his face? <laughs> What's his face? Such an icon that you can't even remember Johnny Vegas' name. That's the that's geezer. He's he's pretty iconic. He's funny. Anyway. He's iconic in a way. In fact, he reminds me of uh, something we might talk about after the uh, break, the uh, the Michelin Man. Did you know WD-40 reputedly got its name because it took 40 attempts to create the water-displacing substance? In the 19th century, Colgate actually produced a toothpaste that was sold out of a jar, and the same company also had a lot of trouble trying to sell their toothpaste to Spanish-speaking countries, where Colgate is roughly translated as go hang yourself. And did you know that Guinness is the uh, the only known beer that has its bubbles for sink to the bottom rather than float to the top? Nobody seems to have an explanation for this. Mike? Welcome back. There's um there's something that's been bothering me. Uh, there's Go two on. grizzled seafarers, and again, I, I I wondered who you consider superior. Who do you think would win in a fight between John West and Captain Birdseye? Oh, now that's that's a tricky one. You see, or, or who would win in a fishing contest? <laughs> who would win in a fishing contest? John West, or Captain Birdseye. <laughs> Captain Birdseye. Ouch. Yeah. Go on. What, what? Because I don't really know why. Justify that. I can't justify it. There, there is no justification. Do you know what? Yeah, but, okay. Oh. Well, well, who do you think would win? It's... Do you know what? I'll go further than that. I actually wrote a piece where uh, a guy hallucinated that um, John West was attacking Captain Birdseye. And basically, West accused Birdseye of being a phony, but not being a real fisherman. <laughs> um, because John West goes through the worst to bring you the best. So, you know, he's he's been uh, thrown overboard, battered by tornadoes, eaten by sea monsters. Oh, this is true. And he's, uh, he's come through it all just to promote his tuna and other assorted seafood dishes, tin dishes. Um, whereas, you know, Captain Birdseye... He seems very much like a. Hang on, but I've... Captain Birdseye seems very similar to another corporate icon that I can't put my finger on, unless I'm just thinking of Santa Claus. Yeah, you're probably just <laughs> thinking of Santa Claus. <laughs> well, he's a. Sure. No, is he? Oh, he? No, no, no. You're he, right. You're actually a... right. That's a very Cor- good point, Mike. Probably the greatest corporate icon one would suggest of all time, Santa Claus, created by Coca-Cola. There you go. Many argue Corp, the, the uh, modern version of Santa Claus yeah. in the red outfit with the big Cute fuzzy green white beard. Before, weren't he? It was. And did you know that Coca Cola is actually green in its natural state? I do know. Yeah, it's actually coloured black because uh, I think they uh, they didn't think that people would take too kindly to drinking green fluid. Oh, seriously? That's, that's, that's interesting. True, true fact. How do you know that? Um, I I don't know. I heard it somewhere. I often pick up little fragments of knowledge without realising where I got them from. Fragments of crap. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I, I want to try some green coke now. I, I think I would be more likely to try it if it was green. If it didn't taste just like syrupy tar. It doesn't taste like syrupy tar. It does. They really should put the cocaine back in it. Anyway, there's a lot of animals that are used to sell sweets to kids, aren't there? <laughs> Let's face it. Because uh, I don't know if, if, whether it's because humans are slightly more, you know, too threatening or or too creepy to to animals promote them. Are, animals appeal to children, don't they? Of course they, they do. And I mean, children love animals. We we've got a number of obvious examples. I mean, we we think immediately of the Arabo bear, the Freddo frog, and th- there's a there's a number of bunnies as well. There's a there's a bunny for Nesquik, there's a bunny for caramel, Kingle. and of course. I think yeah, there's probably a, a Kinder Bunny, and of there course is. there's the Energizer Bunny. Oh yeah, that's which, not which is the sweet. No, but it's the greatest bunny of all. That's all I'm saying. Um, mm. Do you remember? Yeah, does anyone remember Easter Bunny? The <laughs> that again, probably a corporate icon. Yeah. Uh, gone mega stardom. Uh, does anyone remember ha- just how sensual the uh, caramel bunny adverts used to be? Oh yeah. And suggestive. Yep. 
especially considering they were supposed to be appealing to kids. They always appealed to me. That was one kinky bunny. Yeah, indeed. I agree with you there. Like I say, <laughs> they, they always appealed to me, so they worked. Do you think there's a... I mean, as we've just said, there's at least three different famous, iconic bunnies we can think of from the corporate world. There is something of a crossover between characters. I mean, for instance, wouldn't you suggest that the Pringle guy is either an offshoot or partially stolen from or an illegitimate half-brother of either <laughs> Colonel Sanders or the Monopoly man. Uh, <laughs> I see what you mean. What, what is it? Is it? Is it the moustache? I think it's the moustache, the grin, and, and probably the hair as well. They're, they're, they're quite similar, the, the parting and just the overall aesthetic appeal, I think. But, yeah, generally the facial well, hair. Then is. you could just say... Uh, yeah, OK. Um, no, I, I think he's entirely unique and they haven't stolen him from anywhere. Although I'd like to think of him them as all being related somehow. I'd like to think of them he all does. being related to the Monopoly Man. Yeah, everyone should be related to the Monopoly Man. I wish I was related to the Monopoly Man. I think the uh, the most recent slew of uh, new corporate icons is probably from the insurance broker sites. Mm. Obviously, we've mentioned the Go Compare Tenor. Oh, yeah. There's uh, obviously those stupid bloody meerkats... Um, hey, for, they're not stupid. For compare the market, cool. and um, what what do you make of that? That well, it's one of the most unoriginal creations of recent years. But that stick woman for uh, confused dot com, you know the what? one who sings all the time. Oh, oh, to that, disco song. You, no, I don't like that at all. It's uh, it's like pretty it. pretty shamelessly ripping off a lot of other ideas. It's worse it? than the bloody go compare man. Yeah, I'm replacing that. That's now my least favourite. I can't it, stand you it. have to go a long way to find someone who's less popular than the Go Compare Tenor, but well, you just clearly have. you found. <laughs> yeah, you don't have to go that far. Speaking of stick figures, do you remember Fido Dido? Fido Dido. No. No. The yeah. character used to promote uh, Seven Up. Who's Fido Dido? I don't no. know. I probably oh, I will by face. I know. Uh, yeah. No, you'd recognise him if you saw him. But yeah, he was the he was the Seven Up branding character. Why is there not a Dr. Pepper? The following section has been removed due to copyright infringement. Sorry about that. Fight the power. If you had a party featuring corporate mascots and icons, I definitely think it would go down pretty smoothly if you, let's say, were on board a ship in international waters, piloted obviously by Captain Morgan. And then you'd have some uh, pretty rough and ready characters like uh, Jack Daniels, uh, Joe Camel, the Marlboro Man, maybe even Mr. Peanut and uh, Mr. Porky to provide catering. And um, I, I think that party would go, would go down pretty well. Maybe even get Mr. Brain to whip up some faggots for you. <laughs> <laughs> that, I mean, I'd love to be at that party. It, it, it would be pretty immense, wouldn't it? Also, on the, uh, on the same subject... Um, what do you think would happen if uh, Aunt Bessie got with Uncle Ben? Uh, <laughs> it's, it's easy, isn't it? Aunt, Aunt Bessie plus Uncle Ben equals cousin it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know. So harsh. <laughs> Just trying to think of some of the uh, the icons. The Uncle mag- Ben, though, and Aunt Bessie, they'd have to get involved with the catering, wouldn't they, really? Uh, realistically, yeah, I mean, M- Mr. Porky and Mr. Peanut would, would just have to be the snack foods snack rather than anything else. And maybe even Professor Wito, if people had a bit of a, a sweet tooth, he could uh, he could whip something up in a test tube or something. The Schweppes leopard thing. Like, you, can, you can be refreshments. And... The, really? Uh, as opposed to eating people? <laughs> you, uh, you could I, do, I, I guess you'd do a bit of that as well. I, I think you would. As long as he brings the drinks, that's fine. Yeah. Or, you know, if if we have people of a more family mindset, we can get the old Dolmio uh, puppets to to get the family all around the table. Uh, no? they, they annoy me. I think they have to be thrown overboard. <laughs> okay. I, I'd see to that. Yeah. I'd, I'd, I can just see uh, Joe Camel throwing them overboard. <laughs> <laughs> or, st- or, or at least spitting in their face. Yeah. <laughs> st- with his shades on, looking cool and calm. and while he, while, he, while he chain smokes and then hacks his guts out. Yeah. Um, well, 
I can imagine the Quaker Oats Quaker not being too pleased with with all this frivolry. If he doesn't like it, he can go overboard as well. Frivolry? Frivolry? Yeah, I think I just made up a word that doesn't exist. Um, do you know word. who Joe Camel used to remind me of? Or rather, who used to remind me of, like, an innocent version of Joe Camel? Jeffrey Giraffe from the Toys R Us adverts? Why? Because they're animals. Well, no. Is the only connection I can... No, because... Uh, a similar shaped face? Yeah, the the giraffe looks quite similar to uh, to Joe Camel. I disagree. I think, basically, if Jeffrey had uh, become a crack addict and a hopeless alcoholic <laughs> and clearly chain-smoked Camel cigarettes, he would have been Joe Camel. Except not as buff. Oh, clearly not, or good with the ladies. Or as cool, smooth. Um, what do you think of Green Giant? Or what? Uh, would you? Uh, would you? Great big fellow, isn't he? Would you feast on his niblets? <laughs> uh, no, I really no. like sweet corn that much. Mm. The Smash Robot was pretty irritating as well, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that was. It seemed like a bit like a Doctor Who rip-off more than anything else. Well, they're all rip-offs. All of these are rip-offs. We, well, we they, they were mainly created by advertising executives who deal in plagiarism all the time. Cravendale cows, would you class them as a... Yeah, why not? Not forgetting, obviously, the uh, Kellogg's cornflake cockerel, um, which, which yeah. I don't think we've touched yes. on. Do you think there's any relationship between Mr. Brannigan and... Uh, Mr. Brannigan, the butcher who makes the crisps, and Mr. Porky? Yeah. Well, uh, no... But probably not, but I'd like to think there is. In my head, there is. Yeah, to, to me, it seems like Mr. Brannigan is the respectable, commu- uh, loved by the community businessman uh, who Mr. Porky aspires to be. But Mr. Porky's... This is a lame he's brother. A, yeah, he, he's he's kind of his sleazy brother who goes to strip yeah. joints and um, yeah, my dr- kind of dr- guy. drinks his nights away in the gutter. Yeah, my kind of guy. Oh. Although I will answer a question right now. I, I remember back in the day there was a question... Uh, Mr. Soft, why is everything around you so soft and rearranged? Because you're in the K-hole, man! Anyway, I think that's... Uh, <laughs> I think that's uh, pretty much all we've got time for. I hope you've enjoyed this uh, remarkable display of nonsense. Tune in next week. And it'd be nice if you left a few comments or aggressive death threats yeah, on the I, Facebook I, page. I keep plugging the Facebook page. You know, talk to us. Feel free to spam pornography or anything else on there no just inbox that really? to me <laughs> 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 see you next week everyone